Hey everyone, it's Triple Mango Threat. Today we're going over a white and green hug deck, but before we get too far, don't forget there's merch available to purchase, and if you want to buy any of these cards, please use the link below. It really helps out the channel. Roll the intro. Our commander is Selvala Explorer Return for one, a green and a white. It's a 2-4 elf scout, and it has parlay. Tap, each player reveals the top card of his or her library. For each non-land card revealed this way, add green to your mana pool and gain one life. Then each player draws a card. Moving on to ramp, we have two classic commander cards. We got Cultivate for two and a green, it's a sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards, put one onto the battlefield, tap, and the other in your hand, then shuffle your library. Kodama's Reach does the same exact thing, except it's also an arcane spell. The card draw in the deck is mostly applied to all players. You'll see what I mean. Howling Mind for two colorless, it's an artifact. At the beginning of each player's draw step, if Howling Mind is untapped, that player draws an additional card. Rites of Flourishing for two and a green, it's an enchantment. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Each player may play an additional land on each of his or her turns. Silvala's Enforcer for 3 and a green. It's a 2-2 Elf Warrior. It also has Parlay. When Silvala's Enforcer enters the battlefield, each player reveals the top card of his or her library. For each non-land card revealed this way, put a 1-1 counter on Silvala's Enforcer, then each player draws a card. Phantom Mythos for 4 colorless. It's an artifact. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws two additional cards. Horn of Greed for three colorless, it's also an artifact. Whenever a player plays a land, that player draws a card. Temple Bell for three colorless, it's an artifact. Tap, each player draws a card. Alhamrit's Archive for five colorless, it's a legendary artifact. If you would gain life, you gain twice as much life instead. If you would draw a card except the first one you draw, in each of your draw steps, you draw two cards instead. This is an amazing card to be paired with our commander, and we will be reaping all the benefits rather than our opponents. Again, this is a HUD deck, but we might as well get all the cards in life as possible. Moving on to removal, we have Path to Exile for one white, it's an instant. Exile target creature, its controller may search his or her library for a basic land card, Put that card on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle his or her library. Swords to Plowshares for one white, it's an instant. Exile target creature, its controller gains life equal to its power. Now these may seem like they're not any good. Why on earth would we give our opponent extra land or more life? That's crazy. Well actually, this is not bad at all. As magic players, we need to weigh our options. Again, this is a hug deck, but plain. Magic the Gathering, it would be more wise to give an opponent a basic land over a huge Eldrazi that can kill us in four turns or less. Same for giving them ten life or so. This gives us more time to get out one of our better cards, and they have lost their card forever since it's in exile. The last of our removal is Beast Within for two and a green, it's an instant. Destroy target permanent, its controller creates a 3-3 green beast creature token. Generous gift for two and a white, it's an instant destroy target permanent, its controller creates a 3-3 green elephant creature token. Again, you are probably asking, why would I give my opponent a 3-3 elephant? They could block or attack me with that. Well, again, we need to weigh our options. Would you rather give the opponent a 3-3 creature which could attack or block, or our opponent kills us with an even more terrifying creature, or some really awesome enchantment of theirs. When I was new to magic, I would think of giving my opponent a creature, basic land, or life was horrible. But remember, it's all about knowing if it's worth it, and in most cases, it probably is. Moving on to protection, how do we protect ourselves and our commander? Well, starting off, we have Sphere of Safety for four and a white, it's an enchantment. Creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays X for each of those creatures where X is the number of enchantments you control. Lightning Greaves for two colorless, it's an artifact equipment. Equipped creature has haste and shroud and the equip cost is zero. Swiftfoot Boots for two colorless, it's an artifact equipment. 
Equip creature has hexproof and haste. Equip cost is one. These equipments can help us use our commander's ability parlay when she first comes out rather than wait another turn for her to be used. Norn's annex for three and two white or two life for each symbol. Creatures can attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays a white or two life for each of those creatures. Island Sanctuary for one and a white is an enchantment. If you would draw a card during your draw step, instead you may skip that draw. If you do, until your next turn you can't be attacked except by creatures with flying and or island walk. Ghostly Prison for two and a white it's an enchantment. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they control that attacking you. Constant Mist for one and a green it's an instant and it has buyback for sacrificing a land. Creatures deal no combat this turn. This is just like the card Fog, but you can be repeatably activated because we'll sacrifice one of our lands and then this goes right back to our hand. Thousand Year Elixir for three colorless, it's an artifact. You may activate abilities of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste. You can pay one and tap it to untap target creature. Seedborn Muse for three and two green, it's a 2-4 spirit. Untap all permanents you control during each other player's untap step. Seeker of Skybreak for one and a green, it's an elf, untap target creature. Awakening for two and a green, it's an enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, untap all creatures and lands. Instill energy for one green, it's an enchantment aura. Enchanted creature has haste. Pay zero. Untap enchanted creature. Activate this ability only during your turn and only once each turn. Wirewood Lodge is a land. You can tap it to add one colorless or you can pay a green and tap it. Untap target elf. Sword of the Perunes is four colorless. It's an artifact equipment. As long as equipped creature is tapped, tapped creatures you control get plus two plus zero. As long as equipped creature is untapped, untapped creatures you control get plus zero plus two. Pay three, you may tap or untap equipped creature. Pay three to equip. Now your commander being tapped or untapped doesn't really matter to us in the first part of this card, but when we use parlay from our commander, we have the possibility of getting three green mana. We can reuse this ability over and over and it gets out of hand very quickly. I said this was a hugs deck and I meant it. Let's start with Veteran Explorer. For one green, it's a 1-1 Human Soldier Scout. When Veteran Explorer dies, each player may search their library for up to two basic land cards, put them on the battlefield, then each player who searched their library shuffles their library. Haunted Wumpus for three and a green, it's a 6-6 six, six beast. When Haunted Wumpus enters the battlefield, each other player may put a creature card from their hand onto the battlefield. Upwelling for three and a green, it's an enchantment. Mana pools don't empty at the end of phases or turns. Archangel of Strife for five and two white. It's a six six angel that has flying. As Archangel of Strife enters the battlefield, each player chooses war or peace. Creatures controlled by players who chose war get plus three plus zero. Creatures controlled by players who chose peace get plus zero plus three. Tempt with Discovery for three and a green. It's a sorcery and it has tempting offer. Search your library for a land card, put it on the battlefield. Each opponent may search their library for a land card and put it on the battlefield. For each opponent who searches a library this way, search your library for a land card, put it onto the battlefield. Then each player who searched a library this way shuffles it. Collective Voyage for one green, it's a sorcery and it has joined forces. Starting with you, each player may pay any amount of mana. Each player searches his or her library for up to X basic lands, where X is the total amount of mana paid this way. Put them on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Oath of Lieges for one and a white, it's an enchantment. During each player's upkeep, if that player controls fewer lands than target opponent, that player may search his or her library for a basic land card and put that card into play. The player shuffle his or her library afterwards. Gear per Ori for four colorless, it's an artifact. Each player may play an additional land on his or her turn. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, that player draws three cards. Vernal Equinox for three and a green, it's an enchantment. Any player may play 
creature and enchantment spells any time he or she could play an instant. Hypergenesis is a sorcery, and it's green. Suspend three for one and two green. Starting with you, each player may put an artifact, creature, enchantment, or land card from their hand into play. Repeat this process until no one puts a card into play. Tempting Worm for one and a green. It's a 5-5 worm. When Tempting Worm enters the battlefield, each opponent may put any number of artifact, creature, enchantment, or land cards from their hand into play. New Frontiers for X and green. It's a sorcery. Each player may search his or her library for up to X basic land cards and put them on the battlefield tapped. Then each player who searched his or her library this way shuffles it. Magus of the Vineyard for one green, it's a 1-1 one, one human wizard. At the beginning of each player's pre-combat made phase, add two green to that player's mana pool. Dictate a Karametra for three and a two green. It's an enchantment and it has flash. When a player taps a land for mana, that player adds one mana to his or her mana pool of any type that land produced. Ella Damry's Vineyard for one green, it's an enchantment. At the beginning of each player's main phase, add two green to that player's mana pool. So how do we win the game? Approach of the Second Sun for six and one white, it's a sorcery. If Approach of the Second Sun was cast from your hand and you've cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. Otherwise, put Approach of the Second Sun into its owner's library, seventh from the top, and you gain seven life. Test of Endurance for 2 and 2 white, it's an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 50 or more life, you win the game. Felidar Sovereign for 4 and 2 white, it's a 4-6 cat beast. It has Vigilance and Lifelink. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 40 or more life, you win the game. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this Hugs deck that actually has a few win cons. And it can be very political if you're looking for a deck with more of that theme. As of this recording, we hit 55 subscribers, and I wanted to say thank you all so much for the support to the channel. All the likes, comments, and subscribing is very much appreciated. As always, if you liked this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you think the deck could have any adjustments, comment below. And if you'd like to see more of this mango content, please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, peace.